Hi guys, in this video we're going to see a family of meta heuristics called local search. These are single solution based meta heuristics and the emphasis here is in exploitation. We, we saw random search which is all about exploration and in this video we're going to to learn about local search which is all about intensification, about exploitation. And the general idea here is that we're going to start from a solution and we're going to look at a local neighborhood. Okay, that's why we're talking about exploitation, about intensification. We're not going to look far away. We're going to define a neighborhood and we're going to look only within this local neighborhood. And within this local neighborhood, we're going to choose one of the neighbors according to some criterion. And then um, we move to this neighbor we've chosen and we look at the neighborhood of this neighbor. And we repeat this process iteratively. And that is, that is what is common to all local search algorithms. So a crucial point in any local search algorithm is how you define the neighborhood. We're gonna see a, a few examples and then we're gonna see what properties um, must the neighborhood have so local search algorithms work, uh, uh, work well. Okay, some examples of neighborhoods, for instance, if the way we're representing solutions is with two continuous variables, here it would be x1 and x2, um, the neighborhood of a certain solution S could be the solutions that are within a certain distance, Euclidean distance in this uh, in this uh, Euclidean space. Okay, that that uh, and and that defines a, a circle in in this space. So that that could be the definition of of a neighborhood. One way of defining a neighborhood is to make a statement of the sort two solutions are neighbors if and only if this condition is satisfied and in this case we would say that two uh, neighbor excuse me two solutions are neighbors if and only if uh, the distance between them is equal or less than d or whatever okay if we are using um, a representation space um, like the following with a, a discrete binary um, representation with three possible bits, uh, we could define the neighborhood as, as follows. I, I would say that two solutions are neighbors if and only if they differ in just one bit, okay, in just one bit. So for instance, the neighbors of this a solution down here 0 1 0 would be I could flip the first bit and then I would get 1 1 0 which is this one I could flip the second bit and then I would get 0 0 0 and then it would be this one and I could flip the third bit and that would be 0 1 1 which is this one so so in here two two solutions are neighbors if they are linked in by one of these lines, okay? Um, and, and the last example would be if we have a, a problem space, a, a, um, a solution space, where a solution is a permutation of, of three elements, I could define the neighborhood in the following way. Two solutions are neighbors if and only if they differ in only a swap of two positions. So basically, uh, if if we focus on this one, two, three, one, I could swap two for three, and then I would get three, two, one, which is this one. I could swap two for one, and then I would get I would get one, three, two, which is this this one down here, and I could swap three for one and then I would get 2, 1, 3, which is this one. So there again, th there are the three that are linked with, with the line. 
So this, this could be different ways of defining neighborhoods in, in different representations. But the main property that must characterize a neighborhood is, is locality. And that means that we have to define the neighborhood in such a way that neighbors have similar qualities. Okay, the, the function we want to op optimize does not change a lot in between neighbors. So when we look at the local neighborhood, we're looking at small changes in, in the function we want to optimize. And that is, that is the key condition for any local search algorithm to, to work. Why is that? Because basically we're, we're trying to mimic the gradient descent algorithm uh, that we, we've previously seen, but gradient descent is defined, I mean the gradient is defined for at, at least is, it has to be a continuous function and, and in combinatorial optimization problems we're, we're not talking about continuous function, the, we, we're talking about discrete objects and a discrete set of, of options, so we're trying to apply the same reasoning we applied in gradient descent but for a discrete space. And, and the gradient, as you remember, gives us the direction of the greatest ascent and, and in a discrete space we don't have such operators, so what we do is to define a local neighborhood, look at all the neighbors maybe, and, and, and try to select the, the best one. Okay, as we've seen, um, local search algorithms is, is a whole family and we're, we're going to, to discuss three, three flavors, if you like, of local search algorithms here. But uh, all of them work in a similar way in the sense that we, we start from an initial solution, we generate some candidate neighbors, we select the, uh, uh, one of those neighbors, and we repeat this process until no neighbors uh, are better than, than the center of the neighborhood. And that, that's the, the basic idea. The first flavor we're going to discuss is called best improvement. And it's, it's pretty easy to understand. Basically, what we're going to do is to start a, at a certain solution. We're going to look at the whole neighborhood of this solution. We're going to look at all the neighbors and we're going to select the best of all those neighbors and that we're going to move to that neighbor which is the best and that is going to become a, our current solution so then we're going to uh, compute or generate the neighborhood of this current solution and we're going to repeat this process select the best neighbor move there look at the neighborhood select the best neighbor and so on and and so forth so so this is, if you think about it, this algorithm is deterministic. If once you've fixed the initial solution, since you're going to look at the whole neighborhood and you're going to select the, the best, as, as long as you've got some deterministic algorithm to resolve ties, you're always going to get the same solution. Let, let's, let's see it with, with an example. Imagine... Um, we start at this initial solution and the quality of this solution is, is 3 and we want to obtain a minimum, okay? We want to minimize this. So what we would do is to look at the whole neighborhood of, of, of this solution and we're going to assume that we define the neighborhood as, as those solutions that are linked to, to this solution. So we have these four. We have a, a 4 here, a solution that, whose quality is 2, a solution whose quality is 1, and a solution who, whose quality is 4. So among these four neighbors, we would select the one with, with the minimum value. I said quality, that was not a good name, right? Uh, uh, we, we want to minimize this. So, so 1 is better than 3. We would move here because this is the best, and then we would look again at the neighborhood of this new solution where we've moved. The neighborhood would be this point with 3, this point with 3, this point with 1, which is equal but not better, and, and this point of 5. So we would finish here because there is no neighbor that, uh, that is an improvement uh, 
on the current solution. If, if we find one that is um, equally, equally good, we shouldn't move there because then we start uh, cycling around equivalent solutions. So th this would be an example of, of best improvement. The second flavor we're going to look at is, is called first improvement. And it's, it's very similar, but here, instead of looking at the whole neighborhood, we're going to start looking at each of our neighbors. But as soon as we find one then th that is better than us, we're going to move there and, and compute and, and repeat the process. Look at the neighborhood of this new solution. And as soon as we find one neighbor that is better, we move there. So, so in this way, um, well, as long as you look at the neighborhood always in the same order, this algorithm is, is also deterministic. And, and in the worst case scenario, you have to evaluate the whole neighborhood. But in general, you will not evaluate the whole neighborhood because you will probably find a, a neighbor that is better than you uh, before um, looking at all your neighbors. So let's look at this um, algorithm um, with the same example as before and we're going to assume that we're going to look at the neighborhood in this fixed order which is north east south and um, west so basically clockwise right yes and we're going to start again here we would look at first this neighbor this is four this is not better than three then we look at this this is two this is better so this is a better neighbor we're going to move there and now we look at the neighborhood of this solution again. We look at the north, this is two, it's equal but not better. This is one, this is better. So we move immediately. We, we don't um, look at any other neighbors. And now we, we're here at this one. Again, we look up north, it's two, that is not better than one. We look at one, it's not better than one. We look at zero, that is better than, than one. So we move here and again, we repeat the process. We look at one, that is not better. Six, no better. Five, no better. Three, no better. So we finish the process, the algorithm, when no neighborhood, sorry, no neighbor is better than, than us. And this would be the output of the algorithm, which in this case has been better than, than for best improvement, but but this, this was by chance. In general, you cannot say that best improvement is better than first improvement or the other way around. Because not even for the time it takes to, to read um, the, to, to terminate the, the algorithm. Why? Because, okay, with first improvement, in general, you're going to you're not going to evaluate all the neighbors in a neighborhood so you're gonna you're gonna each each iteration of this process is gonna take less time but on the other hand um, in general you will not uh, improve the solution as much as with best improvement because best improvement looks at all the neighbors so in general with first improvement you will have to make more iterations, like in this case, but in each iteration, the improvement will be lower. So, so, so there, there's really no way of saying which one will work uh, better in, in the general case. And one final option um, that sometimes is used is, is called random local search selection where here what we want is to introduce some randomness in, in this process. We've seen that best improvement and first improvement, as long as you look at the neighborhood always in the same order and you resolve ties in the same way, um, that they're deterministic. But here in random selection, what you do is to look at the whole neighborhood uh, select those neighbors that are better than you, just better, and then choose one of them at, at random. Okay, that's, and here you've got an example where each of the three algorithms would potentially give you um, a different solution. So with this, we finish this video and I very much look forward to seeing you in the next one. See you later, guys. Cheers.